okay. Well, anyway, that's Trump. So we we wish him the best of luck in jail. Do we? <laughs> no. Do we really? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a couple of things real quick. Uh, I have a look at the clip here from Fox Business. So this is uh, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, right? We you, you watched that mm, show, right? Mr. Wonderful. And they're going to talk about, basically, he's he thinks that America is going to have to downsize, but all the reasons he gives are backwards. They don't make any sense. It's not the assessment's right, but how he gets there is wrong. You know what I'm saying? So you're saying that he he arrives at a reasonable conclusion, but he doesn't arrive there in a way that makes any sense? Yeah, you right. Yeah, he arrives there because he's trying to push another agenda, and it just doesn't. All right, fit. Well, let's see what he has to say. It I haven't seen this. Yeah, it doesn't fit. It's like watching a toddler try to push a square block through a round hole. It just doesn't work. President Biden taking the podium, getting in front of a microphone. Where else? Delaware, pitching Bidenomics and the billions in spending that comes along with it. A new poll revealing Americans believe that they will be better off financially if Trump wins in 2024. O'Leary Ventures Chairman Kevin O'Leary joins us now. I've always said this, Kevin, it's not about, I'm not talking about personality. I'm going to talk about policy all day long. And that's what the American people feel about Trump versus Biden. When it comes Well, wait a minute. You're talking about personality, right? She's not talking. She hasn't said anything about policy. Yeah, she hasn't said anything yet about policy. But let's let's go on and see what they're talking about here. It's happened. It's become a top issue in the upcoming election, only twelve months away. And all of a sudden, people are looking at the cost of energy, protein, car loans, mortgages. And you know, these are complicated situations because I want to say this too. Are people looking at that? Is that really a big issue? And if they are, is it all of a sudden? Right. And here's the thing is, so like, let me just throw this chart out here. So he's talking about like people are like squeezed is basically the point they're trying to get to here, right? Because of the cost of everything. And look, yeah, inflation was high and prices were up and still are up, right? But this is what inflation has done. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, inflation is down, right? It's up from last month a little bit, but it's at 3.7% from what was before nine, right? Right. And it was all climbing under right here is when Trump left office. Is when you see this huge spike after COVID because we had mishandled the COVID thing so bad. And then coming out of COVID, now all of a sudden people are going back to business. Consumerism is going up. And as we've talked about many times, the companies realized they could just get away with gouging the customers. So they just started charging all these inflated prices, which is what caused most of that inflation was companies just got greedy, which is what they do. Right. 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 So this idea that people are, are worried about the prices of things. And then the energy one kind of shocked me too, that he mentioned that because and it's not, I don't think it's in this clip, but I was watching this on TV and the previous segment, they're bitching about how Biden tapped into the emergency oil reserves. And it, they say he took over half of it. He actually took 40% of the emergency oil reserves in the United States. And he did that in 20, 20, 2022, last year, to basically cap down the price of gas to stop inflation from going way too crazy right and republicans are bitching about him doing that well here's the deal is so he's bitching about well the price of gas and energy here's that from petroleum and other things i mean it was this is 2010 back here in the middle it's 2015 and then it was down for a long time Right. And then it spiked up after COVID. And this is when Biden tapped the reserves and brought it down back to sort of more normal kind of levels. Right. Right. At least roughly kind of where it was. Back right. Then. Right. I mean, it's still higher than it was, you know, 
20 years ago, but you'd expect that. Right. right. But the, but the inflation isn't that bad on it. And that's where, this is where he capped it right here by tapping those reserves. So in one breath they're on Fox news, they're like, he's an asshole for tapping the reserves to get oil prices down and gas prices down. And then on the other hand, gas prices are out of control and it's his fault. It's like, well, which is it? <laughs> right? That's why I love the, like, Kevin O'Leary. He's talking about everybody's worried about gas prices. Have you been reading that? I haven't seen that. And I haven't seen the Wall Street Journal or Bloomberg or anything where people are worried about gas prices. No, that's not something. I mean, maybe in general, because maybe they kind of always are. Like the people who always are probably still are. But yeah. I haven't been seeing anything like new about it or that suddenly, you know, because he used the word suddenly, yeah. which makes it seem like well, they're down. there's this like big change or something that's making people worry, which I've not seen. Yeah. Well, at the peak there, they were at uh, almost five bucks a gallon nationwide on average. Now it's down to 360. So I don't know that people are like freaking out about this, but he seems to think so. But that's kind of where he's going is that they're blaming it all on Biden, but they don't. Once again, these are policy people. It's not about feelings, but Americans feel like Trump is better according to some poll we have. But we're only here to talk about policy. And yet we haven't talked about policy. We just said people feel like this is what's going on. So they've already, right. I mean, they've already lied to you and we're not even a minute in. Because of the rate hikes that happened so quickly, but there's no question. Inflation is not going down. It's north of three and a half percent. And we just looked at that. It's gone down by almost 6%, like five and a half percent. I mean, it's going, it's, it's down. And here's the other thing I want to talk about too, because this just pisses me off. When these, when they do the inflation shit, okay, this is such a scam because they try to spook you out about inflation to try and get you to buy all these shitty products like gold and other crap, right? I'm not saying gold is a bad product <laughs> or anything, or it's not an inflation hedge. I'm just saying it's probably not where you should be parking all your money if you're hedging inflation. But when they do all that, they're trying to sell you this shit. And the irony of that inflation index when they do that is they're using the consumer price index, which is the basket of a, a bunch of different goods that are sold in the US, right? The prices of all these different goods combined. What they don't factor in is, for example, you own a home, Lacey, right? Yeah. You, you pay mortgage on the house, right? Mm -hmm. But if you rent the house, the renters pay a lot more than your mortgage. Correct. Right. So when they factor in the consumer price index, if you're living in your own home, they don't factor in what you're paying in mortgage. They factor in what you would be paying in rent if you were renting yourself your own home. So that mm -hmm. number is inflated. So that 3.7% number is probably closer to 25 because that's 30% mm -hmm. of the index is single home ownership. Interesting. So actually inflation's not bad at all right now. If you bake it into the cake. So, I mean, it's just funny to me that because they, they always have to spike it up to make it seem like it's worse than it is. It's doom and gloom sells. The Fed may have to increase rates another 25 or 50 basis points as early as January, February. It That's will unlikely. be a very hot political to potato and it's going to become an issue because it hits you every day at the pump it hits you every day at the grocery store and that is what really hurts mandates inflation has been hurting presidential runs on both sides of the aisle for decades it's nasty kevin i see your stuff on social media you're but i want to point out again inflation's down so once again they're creating an issue that doesn't exist right because they're placating to a viewership on based on their feelings, not on what's actually happening. So there's no information being passed on here. Just you should feel this way because other people feel this way. It's just horseshit. Trying to guide young people to be successful. One of your greatest tips 
is save, save money. But because of everything that we're seeing under this administration, not only are people not saving, their debt is skyrocketing as well as a nation. We're at the highest debt that we've ever seen. So having said that, um, to me, I look at this as a sort of an erosion true, of the American dream. You've got a generation of- It is, but she's not telling you the whole truth. Something about that, I was going to say, something about that is not striking me right. Yeah, we actually covered this before a while ago, but this is this is what's so funny about that, is total national debt is like over a trillion something now. It's a, it's a big number, right? But it's not because people have been taking out more debt. It's because the Fed has raised the interest rates. So people's credit rates, credit card rates have gone up. So Which means they, more interest is being piled on top of their debt, making their debt number go higher, or like the dollar amount of their debt go higher. I mean, if there's any interest rate, it's going to go higher, but it's going higher by more. Right. So her because argument that people people aren't saving, they're just taking out more debt, is wrong. They're not taking out more debt. They're getting raked by interest rates because the Fed raised rates. And we've argued against that because that's who it squeezes. It squeezes middle class and poor people to try and squeeze the labor market. And if we squeeze the labor market, less people work, unemployment goes up, it cools down the market to try and cool down inflation, which is what the Fed's trying to do. But what you're really doing here is we're trying to discipline the labor market and keep wages down. Right. Right. Which is kind of the game they're playing. of young people who aren't saving, they think owning a home is out of their reach. How do you, um, what happens when that generation now becomes adults and sort of spreads out across the country? What kind of America are we looking at? We're looking at a downsized America. I tell it like it is. Let's talk about housing. You know, just three years ago, even 24 months ago, you get a mortgage at four and a half percent. You're lucky to get one at eight today. So that means the size of the house you're gonna buy is 20 to 25% smaller. That's a downsize. You wanna you wanna borrow for a car? Sorry, that's eight to nine percent, used to be five. So smaller, less expensive car. That's happening at the same time. And also, you really have to think about where you work. If you're gonna spend a lot of money driving, you're gonna pay a fortune in gasoline because that's moving back up. Looks like we're on our way back up to oil between ninety and a hundred dollars. These are all political issues. But the truth is, if you take interest rates up in this unprecedented, you know, from basically nothing to 5%, 5.5% now, and on its way likely to 6 which means the lending rate's more like 9 it's going to hurt somewhere. And it means your lifestyle, if you're in your early... So I'm going to cut him out there, because where it's going to hurt is this. Yes, it's going to hurt consumers on the lower level, right? But if he's sitting there saying, oh, we're going to move it up to six, I don't think anybody thinks the Fed is going to move it up to six. Okay. And just to be fair, in the 90s, um, interest rates were around five to six through the entire 90s. And that was one of the most profitable, that was the most profitable decade in American history. Right. You could go, remember back in the days in the 90s, you could get a CD at the bank for like 9%. You can't even get a bond now for that, <laughs> right? You still with me? Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me now, Lacey, or? Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it just froze. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So we'll just pick up from here. Uh, three, two, one. So yeah, so this interest rate concept that he wants to say the interest rates are going to go to six, nobody really thinks the Fed's going to go to six. It's like five and a quarter now is what they set it at. If they go any higher, they might go to 5.5, but it's it's not looking like they're going to do that. What they basically just said is we're going to leave them at these rates for a while. And part of the reason that is, is um, and we've talked about before, is in the 90s, interest rates were around five to five and a half percent all through the 90s. And that was one of those profitable eras in American history. 
you know, back in those days, you could go to the bank and get a certificate of deposit that would pay you eight to 10%. Mm-hmm. You can't even get that anymore in a treasury bill or a, a 10 year bond, right? Right. So this whole thing about this downsizing thing is a new phenomenon. No, this has been going on for about 40 years, at least. And the real culprit here isn't the prices. It isn't inflation. It's lack of wage growth. You know, and the big issue I would say, and the thing that he missed is that rental prices and home prices have gone up. Right. Right. So like, here's the, uh, the housing price index, right? Just year over year. And I mean, you're talking back in 2022, about this time, 2022, it was around 9% was the increase annual increase in the average house, right? And then as we were coming back from COVID and people started buying houses and stuff, and part of it was the prices were so inflated, nobody wanted to buy. So what happened? The prices all went way, way down. And now they're starting to soar to come back up again, right? But at the same time, well, these people aren't buying houses, they have to live somewhere. So this is the rent inflation. And right, they're staying in the rental market more. Right, yeah. and you notice how the rental inflation increased during that time period, and now it's starting to come down now that home prices are coming back up and starting to sell. Because people, and now it's, it's more cost effective to buy a, a home than it is to rent. But these things tend sure. to be, if you see these two graphs, they tend to be inverse from each other. And that's what's really killing people is the cost of living, right? So yeah, he's right. It is, we have to down, people are having to downsize their lives, but this is mostly because people aren't getting paid that much more. But what's happened now is wages have started to go up. We have more strikes. We have more unions. They're starting to get more power and wages are starting to go up. So it kind of flips his whole script on its head. So, so we'll see what all that goes with that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show that because it's part of, they're trying to sell you this idea, right? And the idea basically being vote for our guy. The problem is, is that, you know, in his case is it's, oh, the prices are too high on everything. So you should blame the current administration, right? But at the same time, if you ask these guys, you know, well, what do you think a person should do who is middle or lower income? They'll say, well, they need to work more. They're not doing enough. They're being stupid with their money. So it's when they don't like the party in power, it's it's the system and you should hate the system. When it's uh, I like the party in power, it's no, it's your fault. It's personal responsibility. Ability, right. It's that you're just not good enough. And with that being said, I've got a gift for you. So I got a clip. Oh, I, whenever you say that, I know you're about to show me Rachel Cruz. Yep. Rachel, you are, aren't you? Rachel Cruz. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I feel like you do this just to make my blood boil. Well. Okay. So yep. we're, we're going to do her and a quick thing. With... Ooh, that was, you did not deny that. Yeah. Viewers noted. You yes. did not deny that he does this just to make my blood boil. Do it because it amuses me. All right, I'm going to put my ice here out of my sippy cup. There you go. Because I'm a grown-up. So we're going to watch her. We're going to watch Patrick Bet David. Um, mm -hmm. And they're going to talk about recession. Now, if you follow financial news for the last two years, everybody's been predicting a recession. And it it's like the recession that won't quite happen. And it just still hasn't come yet. But everybody's predicting. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I keep feeling like it should be coming too. So I'm I, I'm somebody who, who's who been saying, geez, it, I feel like it should be coming. But it it keeps not appearing. Here. So there we go. Well, and I'm going to, we're going to go over a little bit about why that might be. And then we're also going to talk about, at the end of the day, when you hear these people that are getting up there and they're always, always recession, recession, recession. Look. Uh, like I could, like, like I remember it was a 2012 with the Mayan calendar thing or whatever it was. They thought the earth was going to end and people were talking about that. 
I don't remember you don't that. Remember but that? I mean, yeah. There was a big thing that the Mayan calendar ended in 2012, so the Earth was going to end like they knew something back then before soap was well, invented. I guess I'm glad that didn't happen. Right. But I remember my nephew at the time was a kid, and he was like, well, do you think the Earth's going to end? And I'm like, buddy, I've been to like 12 end-of-the-world parties in my lifetime. They thought it was going to end in Y2K. They th I mean, there's always something, right? A meteor got close to the planet. I mean, I could predict the world is going to end every day. Is is that an end of the world party? Is that just an excuse for like to get to? I, I don't know. My case would be a zillion guys coming to me, being like, "Hey, baby, it's the last oh, night on Earth." That's right. We might not make it. <laughs> you could spend your last oh, night with know. all of this. <laughs> Right. Let me show you paradise one last time. Uh, right? Isn't is that what that is? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, but that's my point. Is you can predict the end of the world's I coming. Was your line wasn't it? What? That was your line, wasn't it? Hey, no, baby. No, ba this is baby. The last night on Earth. No, I can't die a virgin. Anyway. <laughs> no, my point is, is you can predict the end of the Earth over and over and over again. And eventually, if you live long enough, you'd be right. Right? But the smart money is not on tomorrow. <laughs> right? That's my point. You can predict a recession over and over and over again. Eventually, you'll be right. But the smart money is not on right away. And the fact is, is the smart money is, okay. the smart money is not on a depression where it's like a lasting recession. Most recessions are pretty short. I mean, most of them are like like three years or under. Like it's between like months up to three years, right? Like yeah, most. I most, can't think of one that's lasted more than a few years. Yeah, most. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, most are under a year. The big ones are like three. Right. Like, like the great. I mean, but, the Great Recession. You could argue, but most most economists will say that was about six months. But that was a lasting recovery. So I would say you could argue four or five years. The recovery was slow. So you could argue. But even even the one with the slow recovery, like it's I'm still being recovery. I'm pressed, I'm trying to think of something that that even that has, you know, really lasted more than a few years. And a few years is like a long one, you know. Well,